Hi everybody, today is January 4th and there were several of you guys that missed uh, class today so hopefully this will help you so that you can get caught up and you're ready to go when you come back to school hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so first thing I need you to do is make a new folder in GoodNotes. We're starting a new unit called Atoms and the Periodic Table. Um, I told the kids that Amplify does a really good job talking about chemical reactions and talking about the phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and what happens to the molecules, to the, to the atoms of any um, solid, liquid, and gas, and, and how they uh, behave in order to change phase from a solid to a liquid to a gas and back again. But the one thing that Amplify does not do is they don't ever really go in and talk about atoms themselves. Like what is an atom? What are the particles that make up an atom? And they don't ever talk about the periodic table. Uh, so we are going to take the month of January and we're going to do like a little mini unit. And we're going to talk about the atoms. We're going to learn about the history of the atomic theory. Um, and then we're going to take notes on the periodic table. Like how, what is it? How is it organized? Um, and what information you can get about each element that's on those tables. So once you've created the good notes folder titled Atoms in the Periodic Table, go to today's folder in Schoology and copy the notes. Um, it's student notes for history of the atomic model. Go ahead and copy those into good notes and then you're ready to go. I opened with this dad joke. Forgive me, I'm sorry, but it's hilarious and I wanted to share with you. Why shouldn't you trust an atom? Well, because they make up everything. <laughs> Get it? It's funny. It's a good dad joke. All right. So we're going to start off with the, um, just an idea of what an atom is. Instead of having a pre-unit assessment, I'm just going to ask you guys to kind of show me what your initial thoughts on are on an atom. There are no right or wrong answers. I just want you in this space right here, draw a model, draw a picture that explains your current understanding of an atom. Basically, draw an atom. What does an atom look like to you? What do you think an atom looks like? Okay. If you can, please make your model big enough for me to see. Um, I had some of the kids just draw a dot. And it's, that's okay if that's what your, your thinking is, but enlarge that so it's a big circle that's colored in maybe if you think it's solid. Um, but go ahead and pause the video and draw a model and show me what you think an atom looks like. Okay, we're going to talk about six different individuals and how they progress the idea of what an atom is and what it possibly can look like um, throughout history. I have uh, <clears throat> these introduction notes, but I want to show you something really quick. The later on we go, you're going to see that there are spots like right here on this slide that you on your student notes, you have these white squares and the information that I have on my notes is yellow. So as soon as you see those yellow squares, you know that those are the things that you need to fill in. All right, so a theory of the structure and behavior of atoms has taken more than 2,000 years to evolve. Prior to the 1500s, ideas about the atom were mainly hypothetical because they didn't have any way of testing those ideas. They didn't have the scientific equipment. They didn't have the scientific knowledge. They didn't have... Um, scientific concepts for them to be able to test those theories. And it wasn't until the 1800s, a, a little bit in the early 1800s, but for sure towards the end of the 1800s, technology became more advanced. So they, this allowed scientists to understand not only the structure of the atom, which includes some subatomic particles like the nucleus, the proton, neutron, and electron, but it also helped them to understand how these um, subatomic particles behaved and how that helped with the understanding of the elements and how different elements have different properties. Um, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so before I introduce each uh, atomic theory, 
we're going to come back to this timeline. And so you see the first one is Democritus, and he's 400 B.C. And the name of Democritus's atomic theory is called the Atomos theory. So Democritus wasn't a scientist. Uh, he was in the 5th century, so four, or 500 B.C. Democritus argued that all matter was composed of small, finite particles that they called atomos. Here's what I imagine. We are so fortunate to live in a time where we understand scientific concepts and we sort of take for granted the things that we know. Like we understand that all matter is made up of atoms. We understand that the atoms are even different elements, right? They didn't understand that back then. They didn't know that. Democritus was the first one to really make some observations and really ask hard questions. And I, you know, he was the first one to look at something. I imagine he was he was maybe writing something on a piece of parchment paper or something. And he was like, what is, what is actually, make? what is this parchment paper made of? And is there a way that I can separate one little piece out of all of this? And so he said that all matter is composed of small, finite particles that they called atomos. Uh, finite, infinite, means it's never-ending, right? So then finite means that there is an end to it. What they mean is that it is indivisible. So atomos is the term derived from the Greek word for indivisible. You are not able to separate it anymore. Um, and they thought that atoms, things that if you were able to take like paper and tear it in half and then tear it in half again and again and again and again and over and over, 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 over again, ultimately you'll get down to a particle that is not able to be torn in half. And that is an atom. That's amazing that they were thinking of that in 500 BC. That's amazing to me that they, they kind of had that thought. Um, because that's where we understand an atom atoms are the building blocks of matter the difference is that these greeks came to a conclusion that everything that could only that everything could only be cut so many times so every they thought everything was made up of that particle themselves so a tree was made of tree particles or grass was made of grass particles um water was made of water particles. By the way, I hope you caught those. Uh, every time I have a yellow word, that's a box for you to fill in. So if you need to go back and do that, please stop this video, rewind it, put it where you need it to be, okay? So water atoms, or I'm sorry, water molecules were made up of tiny particles of water. And iron was made up of particles of iron. It's interesting because we know that water is actually made of one hydrogen and two oxygen atoms joined together in a compound. But they didn't know that back then. They just thought water was made up of water. Whatever the matter was, whether it's wood or leather or dirt or rock or water or iron, whatever, it was made up of smaller pieces of that material. So they named these particles atoms. And again, this is derived from the Greek word atomos, meaning uncuttable or indivisible. Now, this is the second time that I've given you this definition. It's pretty important that you know it. So if I were you, I would go ahead and put a little star right here or some, you know, circle this right here. Somehow make a mark on this paper that you need to know the definition of atomos, that it means uncuttable or indivisible. It's unable to be cut any further. So Democritus just kind of thought that the atoms of a, mat of a material, like a tree or uh, a lemon, determine the properties and characteristics of that material. For example, iron was made of atoms that were strong and hooked together because iron itself is a really, really strong material. 
he thought that well it gets its strength from the atoms from the shape and the and the size of the atoms that make it up so he thought for real the atoms were made out of this like coil that when they got stuck together it just increased their strength and that was an iron atom that it would look like that and then they thought that air atoms were made of atoms that are light and whirly something like a cloud so again, they didn't know that air isn't just air, that it was made up of several different elements like hydrogen and helium and oxygen and carbon and nitrogen and argon, all of those gases that are part of our atmospheric gases. They just said it's air and it's made up of these atoms that are smaller pieces of that material. So an air atom looks like air, right? Isn't that crazy? Um, I'm going to go through the rest of these in this box one at a time. So something like gold would have looked just like this. Gold is shiny and it's smooth and it has that color. And so a gold atom would look something like that. And this is super fascinating to me. So Democritus, I read that, so they were Greek. And in the Mediterranean, they grow a lot of lemons and they use lemon in, in cooking a lot. And I don't know if you've ever eaten anything sour, but sometimes when you put really sour things in your mouth, like a sour gummy patch or a gummy, uh, what are those called? The atomic sour, atomic ball, you know, you know what I'm talking about, really sour things. Sometimes you get almost like a cramp or like a, a pain, a sharp pain in your jaw. What's happening is your brain is receiving the message that you've got something sour in your mouth and it needs to generate more saliva in order to combat that sourness. And so that, that sharp pain that you feel in your jaw, that's actually your salivary glands um, contracting to release more saliva. Well, they didn't know that back then. And Democritus kind of put two and two together and he said, when I eat a lemon, I get these pains right? So he thought that anything that was sour must be sharp, made out of sharp atoms. And so he thought that right there would be like an example of a lemon atom. Isn't that crazy? And then lastly, I read about how he observed lightning in the sky or light coming from the candle. And he thought the atoms of light were shaped like these zigzaggy kind of atoms and that they went directly into your eyeballs like they penetrated your eyeballs in order for you to understand and be able to receive that this was light super fascinating okay so now I want you to check for understanding on the next slide you have a space to write and draw student generated um, drawing of a, a model, uh, the model of, uh, sorry, of Democritus's um, models. So in your own words, tell me what did Democritus think atoms looked like? And go back in your slides and find evidence. Like go, you can, you don't have to do this from memory. Go back and look at your slides in one sentence, write a complete sentence and tell me what did Democritus think atoms look like? And then I want you to include a drawing that explains your explanation. Um, so I gave you multiple examples of what he thought different atoms look like. Pick two or three of them and redraw them and label them so that I know that you understand that Democritus thought different atoms were different sizes and different shapes and that they actually looked like whatever it was that they were making up. That's as far as we got in the notes today. We'll pick it up and uh, finish those notes probably in the next couple of days. All right, hope to see you tomorrow.